very good morning to all my subscribers my viewers the obedient family thank you for joining me this morning now we've been always talking about the present administration bola metinubu and his team and i've been always saying i've i've been a person that have said it times without number that the government has nothing to offer a lot of Nigerians will ask me, eh, we are just some quarter into the, we've not even gone far and you are saying this already. Why do you feel like that? I clearly believe that any Nigerian that has eyes and really wants to tell himself the truth, we look at the indices. It's very clear. You are coming into power and you started making policies. And clearly these policies were not properly thought of. And then boom. The errors are showing everywhere. If a government is trying to improve from the beginning, what they say, how they lead, what they do, tells a lot about what they want to achieve. Clearly. But in this case, the reverse is, you clearly see that these people have nothing to offer. And I've said this times without number, if you are somebody that really, really want to sit down and tell yourself the truth, you see it. Kenneth Ogogwa granted an interview yesterday and it, it one of the most anticipated interviews that we were praying for it to come out. And clearly, he clearly finished it. He do finished work for there. He analyzed and well. He analyzed and well. I'm going to be showing you just the snippet of what captured the sites most of the important bullet points he actually made in that interview so that you get to see that what we are saying is not this thing is something that when you add one plus one you will get the answer it's not something there is no rocket science in it you don't need so much um, 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 analysis and everything to actually understand where this government is headed to but before i do that let me also tell you that he clearly said i'm supporting tinubu i'm helping tinubu let me play that side when i come back we'll continue if you are called today yes. by the government of the day to work with them yes. would you take it criticizing the government constructively is part of helping them but if and you are actively called yes. to play a role and mm -hmm. an announcement is made yes. that Kenneth Nkunko is taking this role in this government, would you take it? I am enjoying the role I'm playing now. So you will not take which it? Which is to critically analyze whatever they are doing and profile solutions. So well, you will not take any role? My preference is what I am doing now. To be a critic? To be an opposition leader. So that's the job of the opposition leader. So, but for the sake of the nation, would you be willing to work with this government? I think the government needs more me. They need me. The government needs me more as an opposition leader. You've seen it, right? Now, a lot of people come to attack us for oppositions, for actually not agreeing with the system, for actually coming out to speak against the system, for actually coming out to speak the truth. And they say, hey, instead of talking like that go and support them find a way to support them that is the best form of support people think opposition or crit criticism is trying to 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 belittle the person or trying to put fingers in his eyes but no you're trying to actually showcase the loopholes so that if they have ears and they can listen they will be able to fix it you are trying as much as possible to actually look for the parts where they are not doing it right and bring it out open so that they can fix it. Opposition has always existed and is the best way. If there are no oppositions, if you're running the government and there are no people that are criticizing you, then you have a problem. Even Peter will be tomorrow. If he becomes the president or he was the president, you will have critics of his government. Campaign alone, we know how many people they enter around. All the good things where they go around, they do now, we know how many people they look and say, Oh, God, your eye service is not too much. So it's a normal thing, and I love the way Kenneth Okonko. Kenneth Okonko is one very, very schooled person. That when you start listening to him, you will not want to stop. I watched that interview from the beginning to the end because of how he intelligently analyzed the situation every question that was thrown at him he 
with high level of IQ answered it and screwed Shion. Shion was silent. Show that I know that uh, before you know, he has, he has, he has, he, he'll break in, he'll break in. To the extent sometimes it used to get me so offended. He'll break in, break in while you are talking. He was mute. At some point, he started even ending the points um, Kenneth Tokoko is trying to spill out. Because he met somebody that understands and is properly learned in the aspect he's dealing with. And that is what st stands him out. And that is why when he wants to analyze this government, like I said, he said it clearly. There is no child bed that is coming out. It's monsters. All those things you are saying, eh, we, let, let us labor. Then the, the pain, the travail of a, 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 a pregnant woman. The pine. And then at the end of the day, when she gives birth, listen to what he had to say about it when she will post the question to him. The National Assembly, the photocopy, National Assembly, allowed the student loan scheme to take a bow and go. And the executive now discovered that they could not even implement it because the provisions are unimplementable. And nobody in the National Assembly even pointed it out. The executive had to go back to National Assembly to write another bill. Student loan scheme. Their own policy. The bill was from them. And they confessed it was unimplementable by their own letter. Within nine months. And the bow and go National Assembly. They still took the bill and told the amended bill to bow and go. First subsidy is gone. They are paying almost a trillion naira monthly on first subsidy. So what have, what have they achieved apart from punishing the people? Employment, expatriate employment levy. They introduced it without even consulting man, Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. They have now removed it. They sanctioned Niger Republic. Ill advisedly punished the whole eight northern states, predominantly Muslims. The Muslim Muslim ticket. And after nine months, they removed it. The Niger Republic said, No, we're not ready yet. You know why? Because you may have the right to declare when a war will commence, but you will not have the right to declare when it ends. This government is bereft of knowledge. That is why before you declare war, you would have to analyze how it will end and know whether you can go in. Nigeria is not Lagos where you sit down and you decree things and you expect it to work that way. Nigeria is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multinational society. And you have to factor in every interest. And you have to employ the utilitarian school of thought in your decisions and law. And this school of thought says... You must look at how you will achieve the greatest happiness of all. Oh, the greatest. So you don't believe there is hope? I've always said there is renewed hopelessness. That's what I am seeing. Why are you so pessimistic? I am not pessimistic. That's the best optimism you can give so that they can even see whether they can change. When they removed first subsidy, I say reverse it that day. And they said, I was pessimistic. What's happening today? <laughs> Why people did not die of hunger then was they had savings. And then they deceived them that over a little while, these things will be okay. They are no longer deceiving them. They finished their savings. It's not okay. And you see, they've already started preparing their mind that, look, oh, even if the refinery start working, that does not mean the price will fall. Then what is the child belt that you have given birth to? That's a monster. <laughs> Now you've seen it right, you've heard it very clearly. And these are the things that I've seen that have made me believe that this government no get headway. I told you right from the beginning, do you know what they are doing? Try your luck. It just be like bet Niger. Now what did they do? Let's try this one. If it works, we stay here. If it doesn't work, we go back. That's what they have been doing. There was no cut out plan on how to run the system. There was no cut out plan on how to deal with the problems. And please, nobody should come and tell me that Buhari was the cause of the problem. You knew that there is a problem. So all those manifestos they brought out, clearly it was written by somebody and they have paid the person and they didn't even read it. 
So what they did was when they got into the seat, they started misusing their mouths, talking anyhow, and then destroyed the whole economy. Not understanding the powers that the president has. Now, they are resulting back into something they have already said they have removed. And at a point in time, they didn't know what to do. They started playing the blame game. But how do we that last? The person you actually blaming, you brought him in. He's your friend. Most of you that are in this cabinet were in that cabinet. So what kind of game are you playing? What kind of blame game are you playing? At the end of the day, they had to say, no, this one is not going to work. So if you look critically at the policies they are making if you look critically at decisions that are brought to the table if you look critically at what they are telling nigerians versus what they do you will get to understand that no there's no salvaging buhari was even way better way better because that one for that period at least when he entered we hear saying cut down in own uh, 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 salary even though he now as Kenneth Ogongo say he now got a robust stamp Senate. During the time of Saraki, there was really tough time. It was a tough time for him. Because Saraki actually played the proper role of what the legislature was supposed to do against the executive. So when you look at the indices, clearly. There was no cut-out plan. There's no blueprint, nothing to run the system. They got in there because it's Emil Lokan, and then they started looking for how to let us add this one and this one, see whether it was. Let's add this one and this one. That is what they are doing up to today. To an extent, the oppositions now are the ones that are now saying, okay, let us do it like this. When Peter will be talked, they will carry it out sharply. They will see, say, walk. You ask if Peter Obi was going to be better, 100% better. Because he had it all figured out. He had it all planned down the way he was going to do it. A lot of people will come and shout, hey, he was going to remove subsidy, yes. But there was a pattern he was going to follow to remove subsidy. He was not going to stand on that podium and shout, subsidy, subsidy is gone. Are they, some of the policies he's taking wrong? No. But what are the things you put in place to cushion the effects of these policies you are bringing? What are those stuff? Where, was it well thought about? Was it well planned before it came out? No. Execution is zero. That is what we are talking about. I'm going to drop it here so that you can actually drop your comment. I enjoyed that, you know, podcast. I hope you get time to go and watch it from the beginning to the end. You know, it's it's it was really really mind blowing. It's on YouTube and it's it's anchored by Sheung. And trust me, you will want to hear what he had to say from the beginning to the end. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Drop your comments below. Really love to hear from you. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so that whenever I drop a video, you'll be the first to be notified. I'm obedient and I'm useful. I hope you are. Fingers crossed. Let's keep holding the rest. Responsible and see how it pans out. God bless you. I'll see you next time.